a disheveled-looking Kurt Cobain pauses on a backstage stairway leading to Nirvana's dressing room at the Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. He offers a visitor a sip of his tea and says in a drop-dead pan voice, I'm really glad you could make it for the shittiest show on the tour. It was October of 1993, the first week of Nirvana's first tour of the US in nearly two years. And by all accounts, Kurt was right. The venue's horrible sound added to vocal, guitar, and monitor problems Kurt dealt with all night. He's in no mood to suffer through what felt like the millionth rendition of their most popular song. Patient fans would not hear Smells Like Teen Spirit that night, so when the house lights go up to end the show, so does a loud chorus of booze. Teen Spirit wasn't just Nirvana's signature song, it was the anthem for an entire generation. Unfortunately, all that unintended attention changed the relationship Kurt had with the song. He grew to hate it. In Teen Spirit, you seem to complain about the apathy of our generation, is that right? Whatever you want to make out of it, it's up to you. And do you share this it's your crossword puzzle? During Kurt Cobain's tragically short time in the spotlight, Nirvana gave the world several classic tracks, but none with the lasting impact of Smells Like Teen Spirit. For some people, it's the only Nirvana song they know. It often shows up on lists of the best songs in the 90s and the best songs of all time. To put it simply, it was Generation X's anthem. So why would Kurt eventually hate the track that gave them worldwide success and recognition? Well, worldwide recognition and success beyond his wildest dreams was not something Kurt Cobain necessarily wanted. The same guy who once famously exclaimed he wanted Nirvana to be the biggest band in the world was now faced with the horrifying prospect of it coming true. Yeah, sure. You know, Kurt probably wanted to sell 20 million records and be the biggest band in the world. But, uh, but I'm sure he didn't want all the baggage that came along with it. I'm sure he didn't even realize what baggage came along with that. Nobody did. I didn't. Kurt's punk rock ethos, along with the mental illness or illnesses he faced, made him also despise that success. As an artist raised in the ethically suffocating punk rock underground, conditioned to reject conformity, to resist all corporate influence and expectation, where do you go? How do you deal with that kind of success? Being the poster boy for a generation and going on magazine covers freaked Kurt out. It put a lot of pressure and unwanted attention on him. But mostly, it was that contradiction Kurt battled with, wanting commercial success, but feeling guilty once it was achieved. Smells Like Teen Spirit was also the quintessential song on Nevermind that showed off Kurt's new songwriting approach. As a Beatles fan, he wanted to write more simple, catchy, and melodic, as opposed to the straight heaviness of most of their previous album, Bleach. It seemed like a, a really challenging idea at the time because we were playing punk rock underground clubs and we thought it would be really funny to test that out on, on those kind of people to see if they would be able to swallow more of a clean pop, you know, sound and see if we can get away with it because we love that kind of music. We like a lot of commercial music. But with Nevermind's later success, Kurt was embarrassed by how formulaic that songwriting approach became. The simple verses would open in a low, moody style, followed by the screaming chorus coming in at full volume and nailing you. You find it in numerous other Nirvana tracks like Come As You Are, Lithium, and In Bloom, even on In Utero with Heart Shaped Box and Penny Royal T. He told Rolling Stone, quote, It's like, okay, I have this riff, I'll play it quiet, without a distortion box, while I'm singing the verse. And now let's turn on the distortion box and hit the drums harder. Those dynamics are typical and nothing new for rock and pop music. In fact, Kurt admitted the Teen Spirit riff is very similar to ones in classics, like Boston's More Than a Feeling, or the Kingsman's Louie Louie. that didn't sit well with the punk rock side of Kurt. In 1994, he said he wanted to get away from that formula and try something more experimental and risky, saying, quote, I want to learn to go in between those things, go back and forth, almost become psychedelic in a way, but with a lot more structure. It's a really hard thing to do, and I don't know if we're capable of it as musicians. Smells Like Teen Spirit also took away a lot of the attention from their other songs. Kurt didn't feel it was superior to anything else he had written, pointing to Drain You as an example of something as good, if not better. But even he admitted, if Drain You was as popular as Teen Spirit, he'd likely lose the love for it as well. 
The song is called Smells Like Teen Spirit. Ultimately, it was obvious that Kurt just got annoyed with how overplayed Smells Like Teen Spirit was. Nirvana. Nirvana! Nirvana! MTV pounded the video into kids' brains as it sparked the grunge revolution of the early 90s. It gave Nirvana a mainstream audience at their shows, and Kurt had a hard time seeing the same types of people that used to kick his ass in high school as his now fans. When a song becomes bigger than you, bigger than your band, bigger than music itself, really, your relationship to it is going to change. No longer do you see it as this simple four-chord riff over a drum beat all those years ago in your band's jam space. When a song permeates the zeitgeist, it becomes its success in a lot of ways. And in Kurt's case, you end up hating it. As he said in an interview after that horrible Chicago show in 93, playing Teen Spirit that night would have been the icing on the cake, making everything twice as worse, saying, quote, I literally want to throw my guitar down and walk away. I can't pretend to have a good time playing it. At the end of the day, Kurt was dealing with a lot of issues internally, and no one really knows exactly why he couldn't enjoy the success Nirvana and Smells Like Teen Spirit gave him. Not even Kurt knew, as he tragically wrote in his final parting note before he died, asking himself, why don't you just enjoy it? To which he responds, I don't know. Mm -hmm.